Okay, so let's crack on with the next amplifier repair that we've got for this evening then. Now, this amplifier is a very, 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 very cheap, shitty amplifier, uh, but this is possibly the sort of amplifier which you may start repairing if you're thinking about going into amplifier repair and you pick up a few cheap amps um, to start looking at and, and working on before you start uh, working on bigger stuff. Um, this may actually be a useful uh, bit of footage for you to watch because it will, this is most likely to be more like a sort of amplifier that you'll pick up um, cheap or maybe for free. Someone will give it to you for free to try and repair, have a play on to see if you can repair. And from memory, this has uh, uh, some, some sort of more in-depth issues. So first things first, are there any short circuits on the board? Are there any short circuits on the board? Very important to check before you put any power into the thing. So check all of the out output transistors and check all of the power supply. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Nothing on the uh, output transistors here, no short circuits. And there's no short circuits on the power supply either. So, no short circuits anywhere. So, we are safe to put a little bit of power into this board and, and, and see, and go from there. So, we have our 9 volts sitting there waiting, ready to go. Okay, amplifier comes on. So, the amplifier does power up. Seems to power up fine. We have a nice big square wave there on the power supply fetch, which looks good. So, let's have a look on the, uh, on the output section then. Do we have the rail voltage where we should have it? Uh, let's have a look. So on the middle of this one, we should have the highest. So the highest rail voltage we see here is 20.5 volts. And this is with a 9 volt worth of input. So we've got 25, 20 volts there. And we should then have negative 20 volts there. Correct. Plus 20. Minus 20. Plus 20. Uh, now nah, that, one's, that one's not right. So we've got plus 20, but we've only got plus 5 on this one which is not right plus 20 minus 20 okay so there's an issue then with this channel here this channel here we are missing we're, we're not getting a high enough rail voltage here on the plus this should be plus 20 so we need to trace back to to where and why that's the case why aren't we getting our plus 20 on this channel let's have a look where does the plus 20 come from ah oh, no hang on a minute that should be minus 20 that shouldn't be plus 20, that should be minus 20. Holy shit, okay. My bad. So, yes, we, 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 need, we need minus 20 on this one, not plus. So we've got plus 20 there. We should have minus 20 on this middle pin, which we haven't got. So the minus 20 should come from, it should be jumped to this one over here. So let's see if they're connected. They should be connected. So the, these, these are four channel amplifiers. So all four channels will use the same rail voltage, so... Let's see. So if we have a look at the other channels, so the other channels you see here, this this is this is the, uh, the these two channels are basically complete mirror images of each other. They are clones of each other. So both of the uh, the, the the positive voltage transistors both are connected together. They both have the back FETs connected together because they both get the same rail voltage. These two, the negatives, should also be connected together. But they're not. They're not connected together. There's nothing connecting these two together. So we need to have a look and follow the traces and find out why that is. So if we start off at the one that's missing the, uh, the, the voltage and trace our way back, it goes to these two little things here on the board. So if we flip it over and see what they are on the board, what are those two little things? These two little things look like a couple of jumpers perhaps so you can see so yeah the, the, this this is where it goes you see this is the um, this is the negative voltage here I think yeah the, uh, on the underside of the board on the underside of the board it goes from here over to here and it jumps to the top of the board you see so I think I think we have a cold solder joint there I think we have a cold solder joint there because theoretically uh, it should just go straight from here, along here, into this uh, little jumper here to jump it to the bottom of the board and then to this one. But it doesn't do that. It does not do that. However, it does connect to the top of the board here. So I think the issue is at, at, this, at this place here, perhaps. So where's that getting its voltage from? Let's have a look. So this is getting its main voltage from 
la 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 all the way around here etc etc to the to the main rails over here so let's follow that and see where it loses it turn the power back on on the on the amplifier okay so the main the 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 rail voltage comes up from here on the bottom of the board goes la 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 up here all the way to this transistor here which we have minus 20 volts on that's correct uh, and then that jumps over to the board over here and it's meant to be on these little connectors connectors here but we have plus 5 volts on them instead which is not right we shouldn't have plus 5 on there so if I probe the jumpers from the top of the board we don't have our minus 20 we have our plus 5 if I dig my probe into the trace on the board we also have our plus 5 but we have our minus 20 on this on this uh, this transistor here so if we zoom in using our zoom in camera here have a look at, at this this trace here see this looks like it's got damn hot at some point in its life it, it looks like the trace is actually snapped so there, there, there's a there's a missing uh, there's a snapped trace on this leg that's meant to be connecting to this trace so what we need to do is uh, there's a couple of quick fixes we can do we can either run a jumper wire uh, from this little uh, this little connector point over here jump run a jumper wire over to this leg or I can scratch off the insulation on the top of the board there uh, and expose some of the copper and then just run a solder blob over so let's try that first let's try scratching some of the insulation off and let's run a solder blob over onto that trace yeah, this you see, this looks like an easy fix, but I know that that's not the only issue here, because the customer uh, claimed that only one out of four channels worked here. So let's just apply a nice thick blob of solder uh, on that trace we just exposed. Make sure that it's nicely seated on there. Okay, wait for that to cool down. And I'm going to fire it up again and see whether we have our missing uh, negative rail over here on the other, on the other transistor that we should should have it so apply a bit more power and what is going in have we recovered our missing rail voltage from here so minus 20 minus 20 yes we have so we now have minus 20 volts on both of those where we should so there doesn't seem to be any obvious issues with the rest of the channels so the next thing we need to do is we need to plug in our RCAs and see whether the other channels are making audio. Aha! Now who remembers watching me repair the Orion the other day? Uh, the Orion amplifier repaired the other day had a broken switch. Okay, Had a broken switch that was preventing any output. So if we have a look over here... Uh, Right, so you see that there's a switch here, and this is uh, the filter, and that is also missing the plastic front to the switch, so I imagine that also might be causing a problem. So before we go ahead with the repair any further, I'm just going to replace that switch, because it needs replacing anyway. Uh, da -da -da, so there, yeah, broken switches can cause issues. And also prevents the user from using the amplifier properly, so that's no good either. So the switch has 10 solder joints that I, I, need, to, I need to suck. It has four mounts around the edge and six pins. You can see there, that's the long switch that it's meant to be. Uh, and that is the, the, the new switch I've installed, which is a lot shorter. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So we're going to try um, front channels. Front channels one and two first. See if, see if that works. Uh, we're going to play 300 hertz just for good measure. Okay, nice. So it looks like uh, both front channels seem to be working. Yeah, perfect, okay, so front left, we have a good looking audio wave. Front right, we've got a good looking audio wave. And um, we've got a little bit of uh, channel leakage there between the front and rear. You can see it's a little bit wobbly on the screen there. When I am, um, so I'm probing the, uh, the rear channels now. And if I zoom in, you can see that the, the wave is, is there. but it's nothing you're going to hear too much. So let's take that out and let's uh, plug this into our rear channels and let's see if both of our rear channels work. Uh, so we've got rear left is working and rear right is working. Woohoo! We have a successful repair. So this amplifier actually had, uh, this amplifier came in with one channel working. One channel working. 
Channel separation is not good. No, Volvo Stef. Channel separation is shit. <laughs> but it's, what do you expect though? It's a renegade. Great success. It's funny, you never know where Jesse is. Like, I'll, I'll see Jesse drop in and I'll be working away. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Jesse would be like, LMAO. And I'll be like, ha! Jesse's watching. All right, so how much power does this janky ass thing do? So we've got 300 uh, hertz going in here. Let's turn her up and see what she does. Okay, so that's pretty much our clip point there. That's our clip point. So how much power was that? And this this is only running, this is only bench testing half of the amplifiers, this is bench testing the um, the front channels only because it doesn't clone the inputs. You can see there on the scope, you can see there on the scope, this amplifier looks nasty. Like the actual wave, like there's a lot of noise interference. So this is a pretty shit amplifier for SQ. So this amplifier, this Renegade, just did the drum roll. 169 watts at 12 volts. 169 watts times 2 at 12 volts, so at 14.4 volts it did 243 watts times 2 at 4 ohms. It claimed, like on the front of the amplifier, it says 2 times 700, which is clearly bullshit. So, that is the Renegade fix. So yeah, the wicked, wicked stuff. We're having a successful evening. Uh, I'm going to move on to something else now. Uh, something a little bit more interesting. We're going to be looking at a JL Audio.